Jotform is a free online form builder that has an array of productivity tools. They make online data and payment collection as seamless as possible so that you can build a better workflow for your business. Some of these productivity tools include survey makers, report builders, PDF editors, and their newly released Jotform tables. They work with big well-known companies such as Nickelodeon, AMC, Ford, and Adobe, so I know that I am getting the best quality and the most effective tools out there. The reason you'll want to use drop form for your business, especially at the beginning of your launch, is to get better insight on your customer base. Using drop form, you can send out surveys and questionnaires to your customers and potential customers to get a better idea of how to market your business and your product to them specifically. For example, there's a full featured online form builder that makes it easy to create robust forms and collect that important data. In addition, there are hundreds of app and integration options, which make it ideal to help build that ultimate business flow. And I'll show you guys exactly just how to do that in a little bit. Trusted by over 10 million users worldwide, Jotform is a gateway to gathering important information to power your business. Now that I've shared what to expect with this amazing site, let's go through an example. But before we get started, consider liking this video and subscribing so that you can learn more about Jotform and other free tools that I use to power my Amazon business. So on the homepage of Jotform.com, you'll have the option to sign up for a free profile, a free account with Jotform. And it's confirmed down here that it is free, so it's an amazing tool to explore for that reason. I wanted to show you a little bit about those 100 plus free approval templates. Now, the great thing about it is once you're in your account, you'll have the option to start creating different tools. And we can dive into creating a template so that way we could see how that works. But there's a lot of different templates to choose from. So there's budget approval, there's new hire approval process templates, which is amazing. And like I mentioned, there's a hundred plus more to choose from. So let's dive in and create a template. So after you've signed up with your email or Google and Facebook, it'll take you to your main forum page. And this is where we'll actually start creating some approval flows. So as you see here, you can select different options depending on how you want to approach your survey builder. So you can do something from scratch, which means that it'll have different options to customize and really make it exactly how you want it to look, what you've pictured in your mind. You can use one-step approvals, which is again an outline that they have set up for you where you can fill in the blanks, or you can use one of the templates that I showed in the previous page. There's over a hundred plus to choose from. I'd say let's start from scratch because at first that sounds like an intimidating option. So we can get over that initial fear. And then in the future, if we need to whip up something quickly, or maybe have a colleague do something that don't you don't want it to take too much time, we could use the other option. So let's dive into starting from scratch. So jumping in, you'll see that there's a lot of different elements that you can start adding to your workflow. So they're here in the middle, there are added elements that you can add. There are different types of forms. And if I click on that, it says choose template. You can also preview and, and select different options off to the side, but let's choose perhaps new customer registration form. And this is how a preview of how it would look. I'm sure you've seen something like this in the past. It seems like a pretty standard registration form. Um, you know, something that you filled out online or even in person if they have something like this printed out. We'll go ahead and use this template as a kind of common example. So now this registration form has been added to your customization page where you'll be adding and personalizing it the way that you want it to look. So at the top, there's an option to add your logo, makes it really easy to enter maybe a URL or any other images. You can drag and drop here and it'll upload your logo. Pretty simple. You can also add more form elements. So this is where it gets really exciting to really make it unique to you and your business. So you can add things like headers if you want to you know, give a little more information. You can also change up the full name option. For email, you can add an email. You can also maybe manipulate that into a different area. So if you want to have someone, you know, enter their full name and then email right after, you can do that as well. Email is how I would communicate with the customers most of the time. So I want them to be able to enter that right away. And within the email option, you can go off to the right side where it says properties. Now here is where you'll be seeing a lot more options to customize it. So you can, um, let's see, you can, maybe make it more centered off to the right. I like it off to the left maybe. This can be the set as a form default, which is great. 
I would make an email a required thing. So usually, you know, you'll see the little asterisk there where it's like you cannot submit the form unless you've included those certain areas. So I would definitely want to have a submission that has email. Address is less important. Um, we can go ahead and turn that off in just a moment. Um, actually, if we just click on that, it says that I can take it off. And so the asterisk is no longer there. Um, back to email, you can give an example so that people know how to include their email. You can duplicate the field, um, maybe if there's a second email, but that's a little less common. And that's about it. You can do any other options as well. Limit entry for characters, which doesn't really pertain to the email. I'll do phone number as a required option. How did you hear about us and any other thing. Feedback, if they want to include it, if you really want them to submit more feedback for you, then you can make that with a required field and all that good stuff. Back to the other side for form elements. You'll see here that there's a little more to add if you wanted to do maybe the date, maybe a signature if you want to do for maybe like PDF options as well. As you know, like with Adobe, it's really important to with online documents to be able to have a signature. So if you're creating a form, a form builder that requires a signature for a little more legitimacy, then you have that option to add. For this purpose, I'll just take it out. How did you hear about us? Feedback, suggestions for improvement. Okay. There's also ways that you can even make it more interactive and a little different because as I mentioned a bit earlier, this is a pretty standard form that you'll receive. Off to the left side, there's a lot of different options. Um, you can even add payment if this form is going to be something that's related to a product sale. So they have a lot of partnerships with really big, well-known payment methods. So it makes it really comfortable for your customers to trust that this is a legitimate survey, payment collector. It's going to make the customer feel secure because you've most likely gone through this type of form in the past. So let's see how one looks. We can do PayPal business. We'll add it right under this little widget here, but of course you can move it around to wherever you need. And here you can connect to your PayPal. You can do different currency if you're in another country. Payment type show debit or credit. Perfect. Seems really seamless and very simple to connect to any outside third party that you want to include in your form. Let's see, phone number again was listed there. We could take that off. You can add a heading. Let's see, we could do payment options here since the payment will be below. You can make it larger, smaller centered. Um, let's see what other little widgets are off to the side here. Let's take a photo, image slider, inventory. Hmm, you can even add YouTube here. Perfect. You can even add a video to your forum. So maybe at the end, once they've gone through everything, maybe you have an, a YouTube video on how to get ready for your product to arrive. So you can connect your YouTube channel or video here and once they've submitted the form, they'll be able to watch that video. Everything else here, you can do all sorts of different customizations that make it very unique for your business. So one other thing that I could show you guys, because a white background maybe is not as inviting or unique to your business, you can go out here to the little paintbrush and you'll be able to definitely take it a step further and change the color. So it could be orange and yellow and brown. You can select different styles, themes. Maybe you wanna use something very colorful with some confetti in the background, it seems like. This one seems pretty interesting too. Let's see, set as default, a brick background. So there's a lot of different featured themes that they include for you or you can change the image in the back to something that you already have as well. So that makes it really easy. Under layout, you can choose a classic form or a card form. So for classic, this is what we went through just now, very standard all on one page, or we can change it to a card form. So we can take a look at that, see how it comes out. So for a card form, it'll kind of separate each section into its own little box, which might be a little easier on the eyes. Um, it's a different experience that a customer can have. And then you'll see that there are 10 questions to answer. So they can go on to the next one. 
um, maybe the first page being the name, second email. So it really depends on the experience that you want, you want your customer to have. You can also split test it, maybe sometime do the classic form, another the card form, see what resonates best with your customers. Now at the top here, you'll see that we've been working in the build section. We can go over to settings and even add more little details to this form. So you'll have form settings, you can add the title, there is emails to send emails after submission. So if you want to add an email, maybe notification email or autoresponder, that can be an easy way to communicate with people. There's also different conditions. So let's see, how did you hear about us is one example. You can add other ones, maybe skip to hide a page, or you can change your thank you page, which is awesome as well. So at the very end of the survey or form, um, you know, the customer will have a thank you page. In that thank you page, you can add a little more customization. So it gives you a preview of what that looks like there. There's also different integrations that you can add. So we went over one example being the PayPal one. You can choose any other payment site that you like to use or that you're using for your business. Some other popular ones are Slack. Maybe if you're working on sending surveys to your coworkers specifically, maybe get an idea of some feedback from your crew, your group, your team. You can also use Google Drive, Zoom, MailChimp, Dropbox, Google Sheets. Again, very common integrations that we use in our day-to-day -day life so that you can include it all in one area depending on what you're trying to collect. There's also the new approval flows that I had mentioned a bit earlier. So it allows your employees and colleagues to approve or deny any submissions, which is fantastic. So if you're working with a big team, this can come very much in handy. The great thing about Dropform approvals is that you can automate your approval process with your other colleagues, your people in your team that will help review everything for you, confirm, make edits if necessary, and it's going to be a really simple process to send those forms and those surveys to other people in your team. So you can see here that there's a lot of different ways to set this up, but it can be set up in minutes and I can show you guys just how to do that. So you'll see here that you'll be in your account similar to when we were building a questionnaire for your customers, you'll see a similar account setup. So in the front here, you'll have your approval flow and this is what they've outlined for you. So you'll add a form here that can be that customer form that we filled out earlier. You can add it to this area here, new customer registration form, and then you'll head over and add an approver. So this can be anyone in your team, perhaps an HR member or a hiring um, team member. If they approve that, then your request has been approved. You can maybe send it to another person to review it if you want. If it's denied, then it will be sent back to someone else for any edit. You can also undo anything at any moment. Um, so there's the undo, redo, which is really nice when you're setting up this flow. So it says the last time that we used this activity, which was today. And then there is mobile notifications. So it kind of gives you an overview of what it would look like on your phone, someone's device. It's really awesome. You can turn on notifications for this mobile app or you can have them off. Moving over to the next section, it would be publish. So now it won't publish it right away, but you'll have these different options once you are signed into your account to do some direct links. You can share it with a broad audience. You can send the link anywhere and you can invite people, perhaps your team, to this specific form. There's embedding options, you can assign the form to people, there's different emails that you can use, and then there's the PDF. So you can download a PDF version of it if you want someone to maybe just have access to the PDF but not necessarily editing or any of that nature. And then at the end, you'll have the option to publish it. You can use the option to send links to someone or you can publish directly on different platforms. So third-party platforms, including Facebook and WordPress. There's an array of other options, Shopify being one of them, which is a very common e-commerce platform if you wanna sell your product on there. The very end too, you can preview the form that we worked on. So you can click the option up here. We'll give you the desktop version of this preview. You'll see here that the fields that you indicated as required will show up um, and kind of put that red outline on there to make sure that it's filled out. The YouTube video that we mentioned, and that's it. You can also see a tablet version. You wanna make sure that it's tablet friendly and what it looks like on a phone device. So. It's a really cool way to preview this. You can also send the link to someone else if you want someone to verify it as well. Once you've previewed it and like what you see, you'll be able to send it off and be done with your first 
form. So it's a very simple process. There's a lot to play around with, which is really fun. It'll take a little bit of time to kind of get an idea of what works for your business, what it is that you want to include. And then over time, once you've sent these forms to your customers, you'll have feedback on what works, what did they like, what did they not fill out, what did they not you know, want to answer in those forms and make adjustments accordingly. As you can see, JotForm is an amazing tool to incorporate for your business. It's helped me understand my customer base better and to be able to cater to them as best as I can to make sure that they keep coming back to support my business. To get started with JotForm, you can visit their site at jotform.com. You can also click the link in my description box below. And to learn more on how to launch a business on Amazon, I share everything with the numbers, how I did it, how you can do it as well. Click the video here to learn more and I'll catch you in that one.